grace that you've shown on us. The grace that first opened my heart to see my sinfulness and how far I was from you and how much I needed you. The punishment that was ahead for me if I didn't. Lord, that was grace to shine in my heart. And thank you that that same grace then, then give me the ability to call, to call out to you and turn my life over to, to someone I've never seen but to, to my faith to, to become part of your kingdom, Lord Jesus. And I pray that in these moments you would continue to just open our hearts to you. Thank you, Father. From 2 Corinthians chapter 2. I'm going to just no, let, let, make that chapter 4. It's talking about the scripture and the revelation that we are supposed to bring through our living, through our lives. And verse 1, he says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry of being unveiled, having people be able to look at us and see Jesus. What a great ministry. As we have received mercy, we faint not. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness. This is 2 Corinthians 4, 2. Nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Manifestation of the truth. You know, you, we know what manifestation means. It means to, to make visible something. It's like somebody did a big work of art, you know, and, and uh, had it all covered up, and, and the, the crowd was gathered around, and you pull the, the, the sheet off, and everybody sees it. And usually that's a good thing. I, I used to live in Level Cross, North Carolina, and uh, Richard Petty was just down the block. I could hear him rev revving his engines and getting ready for a race. And, and so the Little Cross was his hometown, and so they, they put up a, a statue for him, you know, and the news people were all there. And uh, so this is, it occurred to me, so I got anything that, that occurs to me comes right out, no pictures. <laughs> but they gathered around, and, and this, the statue looked like a little kid with a big hat on, giant boots, and that they had made the hat and the boots to life size, but, but he was very small. <laughs> Everybody's like looking at it going, oh no. <laughs> so sometimes manifestation is not a good thing, but, but we as Christians, the Lord has put in us the, the greatest thing to be able to do is to be a light. Now I'm not crazy about, about darkness. Uh, when I was a kid, I had to have a nightlight. I'm burying my soul to you all now that you know these secrets about me. Anybody else have a nightlight? Yes, okay, thank you. I'm not alone. I'm going to the nightlight of the anonymous club. <laughs> I didn't like the dark then. I, I, like, I don't like it much better now. But thank the Lord, I have the most expensive flashlight in the world. And occasionally I get a call. On it. <laughs> but the darker the night, the more important the light. The darker the light, the more important the light, also the more visible the light is. And uh, that's why it's, we, we enjoy being out west. Sometimes you go out at night and you know you forget where you are. And so you can get away from some city lights. We love Yuma down there, and it's and, and you walk out and you just you go, oh my goodness. So the stars are always there, but when you just have to get in a, a situation where the lights are dim enough that you can really see what's out there. And see, dear ones, the darkness is here, and we might say in a way it's a good thing for us because the light that God has put in us, we are here to shine it to the world, and the world is in darkness. Look what it says here in verse 3. It says, but if our gospel be hid, and it is, it is hid to them that are lost. See, we use the word lost, and we're not lost and saved and that stuff, but lost really means lost. I don't know if you've ever been in the woods and got lost, if you have, it's a pretty scary feeling. Especially if you have no cell phone service. But, but literally, the world is in the dark and lost. They don't know it. And that's why they have to have alcohol. That's why they have to have drugs. That's why they have to give them chase for money. They're, that, that they are lost children. Verse 4 says, 
and whom the God of this world, now that's God little G, and then obviously we're talking about the devil, has blinded the minds of them that believe not. Wow, it's hard, you know, imagine blinding the mind. Last time I was at the optometrist, they said I was pre cataractal And I, that's a funny word, you're pre cataractal <laughs> But you know, cataracts are things that cover up, cover up normally good eyes. And uh, I read a uh, thing in National Geographic, all these optometrist doctors went to Nepal, <clears throat> and uh, all these uh, seniors up there, that, you know, natives from Nepal that hadn't had cataracts for years, and the, these doctors went up there and they, they did free surgery on these dear older folks. And uh, the National Geographic had pictures of them, the first experience of walking out, now they were born in this place, but they hadn't seen the Himalayas in the mountains up there in 20, 30, how many ever years? And they showed them just standing and weeping, just looking at what they hadn't seen, what they had missed. Some of them were dropping off dropping down the doctors and kissing their feet because they were so, what a gift to give what you haven't had for so long. And see, when we, the, the world is just, and more so, just as blinded as somebody who cannot see. And, and they don't know that they're blind because it's their minds that have been blind. See, if you and I have, have trouble with our hearing, trouble with our seeing, and our minds okay, we know that we have that trouble. No, we know there's a, a handicap or something we don't, it's hindering us from, from living our life the way we would like to. And the world does not know because their minds have been confused. Their minds have been darkened. And uh, they're stumbling. But imagine, lost and stumbling because your mind is, is, is blinded. What a terrible thing because the God of this world has done this to them. And then what it says, look, it says, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine. You know, sometimes you look at TV and you see the way people are living and you see the riots and you see the, you know, the, the general debauchery that goes on in our country. And it's easy to, to be, become, I don't know, uh, you know, I, I try not to post any, I'm kind of tired of seeing the negative things and the things about, you know, and I try to just say, well, if you write a post and say, you know, yay for this guy and boo for that guy, if somebody reads your post, they're not going to go, you know what, I was always against that guy, but now I, I've read this post and now I see the light, now I'm for it. You know, it usually doesn't happen, it just makes them matter. Mm -hmm. But what they really need is the light of the knowledge. Oh, look at this. Okay. We preach, or where is it? Okay, verse 4. The light of the glorious gospel of Christ. I won't break it down too far, but we know what gospel is, right? It's the word for dunamis. It's the word for dynamite. Woohoo! Right? That sounds pretty strong, doesn't it? Uh, the, the light of the glorious dynamite of Christ, man, who is the image of God, should shine unto them like a laser. For we preach not ourselves, but Jesus Christ the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Christ's sake. For Jesus' sake, for verse 6. For God will command the light to shine out of darkness. I wonder if the Lord videoed stuff like that. Do you think the Lord videoed creation? <laughs> Maybe we could rent the Blu-ray or we have it. Be cool. uh, the resurrection, you have to make sure you get that, rent that before the weekends in heaven because weekends everybody wants to see them. <laughs> this is a strange place sometimes. <laughs> The Lord could show people in the past, the future. Remember John uh, in, in Revelation? He saw the, the future. He saw the throne and, and the worship in heaven. And, and I wonder if he saw you or me. Sometimes John was looking ahead and seeing the Maybe God can let us look behind and see the back. But he's in charge of all that stuff. Woohoo! You can say amen sometimes if you want to. Amen. Amen. Sometimes. Oh, thank you. Now, you think 
into the power of the sun. God created that and uh, the power of its radiation. And, and I used to like to go sit in the sun, probably not a good thing for your skin. But I, I used to like just feeling the warmth of the sun on you and, and how far away the sun is and yet, yet what it does, uh, it shines in our windows and it shines in our, if you're in Arizona, it makes your door handles very hot, so be careful. A lot of the restaurants that we would metal door handles have a, have a, a what do you call it, a pot holder that you pick up and have yeah. to hold the door handles so you don't come in and yeah. <laughs> But the sun is, is so bright and God, the same God that said, let there be light and caused the sun to continue to shine has shined something even more powerful than the sun into our hearts. He shined in our hearts to give the light, here it is, <clears throat> of the knowledge. Now this is the light. The light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The face of Jesus is where God's glory, uh, Hebrews chapter 1 said, God, when sundry times and diverse manners spake in different ways to the, in, in the past through the prophets to the Old Testament. But he says, now he has spoken to us in, in the person of his dear son. God uh, focused his rays, his glory, into Jesus. And Jesus had to hide it or else people would have been blind. Imagine if you could have seen the glory of Jesus there on the earth. It would have, he, the earth couldn't handle it. And people were trying to get him to show a sign. Wouldn't that, you know, could Jesus have shown off a little bit? You know, you don't believe me, huh? Well, watch this. Could he, could he, couldn't he have done something quite impressive? Made a whole new universe in front of him. Shoot new animals, shoot up in the air like a rocket. He could have done <coughs> about anything to reveal his his glory. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> but he didn't do that. His glory was hidden. Why? Because he wanted people to receive him by faith. Remember what he said to them, what do people say that I am? I said this and that. But then he said, what do you say that I am? And what did Peter say? Now we're at the Christ, the Son of the living God. Man. Almost the greatest thing any Christian, any person has ever said on the planet. But a little bit of warning, the next thing that Peter said caused Jesus to say that we would get behind me, Satan. <laughs> so I've learned that the, the, the devil can speak through Christians. Uh, I've held some business meetings in the church I've passed through before. <laughs> you know, it's you know. difficult. Okay. But here, uh, the testimony of who Jesus is was, was spoken by a human being. And when, when they knew who he was, Jesus would say, but don't say anything. He'd hit it. He covered it so that we could be, we could see him together. Okay. So the light, the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So what does he want from me as a Christian? He want, God wants me to be the face of Jesus in the earth. He wants my mind. And the Bible says we have the mind of Christ. He wants me. You know, the little, the little bands that say, what would Jesus do? And people were kind of down on that. But I don't think that was like, I mean, isn't that what we're supposed to be doing? What Jesus would do? Amen. We're supposed to represent him in the earth. That's why it's so important for Christians to live godly. Sometimes I run into people who go, well, you know, actually, I was having a service at the uh, Word of Life. We used to go up there every year since I was little. And uh, I was giving my testimony there. And this man came up to me afterwards and he said, uh, well, you know, my testimony is sort of like yours. I mean, I still like to smoke pot once in a while, roll me a little joint, read the Bible occasionally. He said, a little pot's not going to keep me out of heaven, is it? I said, well, sir, you better hope not. Didn't that, didn't that scare you? Wouldn't that be something to, where you go home? Anyway. That is the absolute most serious, important thing for our lives, is that when that day comes, there are no surprises. Amen. Because the Lord Himself said there would be many in that day that would say, Lord, Lord, have we not? And look what He said they did. 
Have we not done mighty works? And he could even say, have we not cast out devils? Have we not prophesied? And he didn't say you didn't do those things, but he just said, but I don't know you. And that, that absolutely, as, as a believer, I know that I'm born again, I'm trusted in the Lord, but I'll tell you what, I don't want to do anything in my life that would cause her to be any shame or any regrets in the day. Amen. I can stand before him, having lived my life under the blood of Christ, and serving him with, with a whole heart. Because the responsibility is so great. The world is dark. The world is dying. They're lost. And you and I are the rescue mission. He's shown his light into our hearts so that the world can look at us and see Jesus. Who among us is worthy of that? I know I am not. But I'm so glad the Lord has, has graced us to put his spirit in our hearts. Do you know the Holy Spirit lives in you? Does that blow your mind? He should. That's why he says, what? Know you not that your, your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, and you have a God, and you're not your own? He's saying, are you crazy? Are you going to do wicked, thin, sinful things with the Holy Ghost of God living inside of you? What? No, we shouldn't. But really, I'm uh, realizing on the other hand that he is shining us on purpose. Let me just read one more verse that I think will bless you. Two more verses. Three, three, four more. A couple more verses. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to back myself into a corner too much. Right? <laughs> but verse 7, we have this treasure. What treasure? The, the knowledge of the glory of God. The, the spirit of God living inside of us. The incredible power of, of the gospel had been revealed to us and is now in us as seed to, to be given to the world. We have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be gone on all of us. We're saying we are troubled in every side, yet not distressed. Now this is the Apostle Paul. He's not having a bad day. This is, he's, this is truth. We're troubled, yet not distressed. We are perplexed. What does that mean? Do you ever scratch your head sometimes? What's, what's going on? We, we are... We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted. And I kind of think persecution is going to get worse. I, don't, I hope not. But I think it's going to be, you know, anybody that stands up for right and truth, you may be scheduled for something really bad. But you know what? What a great thing. What a great thing. Lord, let us be bold in that day. Let us not. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus might be manifest in our body. I think that just means it's not about me anymore. I have to realize for me to live is Christ. I die is gain. And boy, you, you get that in a bunch of Christians, we're hard to deal with. You know? You feel me? You know, I've talked to some Christians that are so terrified with the possibility of someone getting some sickness that they back themselves into a corner and don't, don't ever preach the gospel. I think what this whole thing has been about is to keep Christians from preaching the gospel, to keep us from fellowship, to keep us from loving each other and preaching and speaking to, to people uh, that need Christ so desperately. And uh, it's time for us. I remember my mom and dad, when we were teenagers, uh, we were in the Philippines and we ministered in, in leper colonies in the Philippines. And uh, sitting five, six feet from people that were you know, dying of leprosy, and mom and dad didn't go, well, we can make it sick. We can't move on there. We went in there and preached the gospel. They needed it. Amen. I like this. Okay, let's look over to uh, how about verse, verse 15. It says, For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace for the thanksgiving of many were down to the glory of God. Verse 16. For which cause we faint not, though our outward men perish, Anybody experiencing that sort of stuff going on? <laughs> the outward man perishing? Uh, saw my son uh, first time in a couple years, uh, a couple weeks ago, and he looked at me and he said, Dad, you shrunk. <laughs> well, thank you for making my day. It's even better now. We're going closer and closer back to the earth again, aren't we, right? But uh, the one outward man perish. Because, you know, even, even a baby is 
headed toward, you know, however old you are, especially when you're young, you think nothing could ever take you from this planet, and so you do a lot of foolish things. But, but in these days, our outward man is definitely perishing, but the inward man is renewed day by day. How do we renew the inward man? Uh, I saw a picture on Facebook, somebody put up of a, of a Christian, and the Bible was hugging them. Isn't that sweet? The Bible is, when you read scripture, it's sort of like the Lord giving you a hug, and the faith is renewed. Woo! For our light affliction, which is but for a moment. And these people he's writing to, what was the light affliction they were going through? They were being fed the lions. They were being dipped in oil and, and wax and made used for candles at the Nero's parties. And he says, you're a light affliction. So we were all going through things, aren't we? Have anybody been through stuff this year? I know you have. I know we have. And it's, but yet, look what it's doing. Our light affliction, which is but for a moment, thank the Lord it's for a moment, worketh for us. What? Affliction or difficulties or testings or trials are working for us. What are they working? A more exceeding eternal weight of glory. Wow. While we look not to things which are seen, but to things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Lord Jesus. Do not be discouraged. Do not grow tired. Lift up the weak knees, the feeble hands. Be strong, Lord. It is scripture in your heart. They may be coming to the Bible soon. The Bible is the book of truth. It's the only hope. And so we better hide it in our hearts. Amen. Hide it in your hearts and take it from your hand. If it's in your heart, you can't take it from there. Stay close to the Lord. Ask Him to fill you with the Spirit. I know He said the Spirit was in us, but say, Lord, Holy Spirit, here I am. Whatever you want me to do today, give me strength and I'll do it. Stay as close as you can. Now let's just close in prayer and then I'll turn back to Pastor. Father, we just thank you for these moments. Thank you that, that you care for us. Lord, you knew when you when you caused your apostle to write this down that we've read this morning, you knew that we would be reading it this morning. You knew that there was needs in our heart for this encouragement. And thank you for thinking of us. Thank you for caring that we were strong and did not be discouraged. Lord, we love you and we, we pray that that day that we stand before you would be a day of joy and glory and thankful thanksgiving. And for all those that we love too, and our friends and, and those that, that, you, that you put on our hearts to pray for. We continue to hold fast to them too. In Jesus' name.
and share the light that is within us. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, folks. We do have, uh, oh, I, I touched on this last night. Uh, there's three ways you can support the tallies if you want to support them, if you like what you heard this morning. Um, first, you can, we have the baskets at each entrance. You can drop some cash in there. That's a great way to help them meet some of the expenses that they have. Also, uh, they have CDs around the corner that if you like the, the music, you can stop by and pick up a CD. They'd really appreciate that. And they've got prayer cards at that table too. That's the third, is just commit to praying for, for Paul and Cindy too. So, okay, thank you. Yeah.